All right, it's inbox time. This is the time when I answer your question. Uh, let's go ahead and get started today. Our first emails from Scott. Hey Albert, I've been researching for a month or two on current computer tech as I would like to build my first one. I have run into a fork in the road. I really want to use an Intel DX48 BT2 motherboard because of the stability and name, but I don't know what graphics card I should get. I would like games to look good, but I am on a budget. I could crossfire cards on my Intel board, but how much better would that be than a nice big hunko 9800 Nvidia? Thank you, Scott. All right, Scott, well, the 9800 has come down in price a little bit. Uh, it came down, I think, to 200, and now we also have the 9800 GTX Plus. Uh, so it's not, it's, you can't go wrong either way, but since you do have the Intel board, I kind of recommend you stick with the ATI cards. It's not a big deal, but it will let you run more later on in Crossfire X. And if you're talking about price, the 4850 is right up your alley. The 4850 is 200 bucks, it performs amazing i mean it's it's a very fast card so take a look into that keep with the ati for your budget and as well as uh you know so you can scale it in the future you can go up you can add a second card so uh yeah try, try out the ati but if not the 9800 gtx pluses will be fine too uh let's go to the next one here from dixon Let's go to the next one from Dixon. Hey, uh, in my new desktop that I am building, I am planning on buying a PNY GeForce 8600 GT512 MB GDDR3 card. What do you think of this card? Is there a better one I can get for under 150? Also, what is the difference between PCI Express 2.0 X16 and PCI Express S16? And is it similar to USB and USB 2.0? Well, Dixon, ironically enough, you're absolutely right about the uh, USB and USB 2.0. It's kind of the same concept. Uh, PCI Express 2.0, what it lets you do is it lets you have double the memory bandwidth on the same bus. So even though you still only have 16 lanes, it's transferring double the amount of throughput. Uh, so it's very similar to USB 2.0, it's on a different concept, but uh, same amount of lanes in the bus, double the bandwidth, it's twice as efficient, it works twice as good, literally. Um, so it's very good for that, you know, for that type of interface. Now, on to the other question. The 8600 GT is not a bad card, don't get me wrong, but when the 8800 series came out, it was a huge jump in, in technology and a huge jump in, G, in uh, GPU technology. So where you're looking at the 8600 GT pumping out, probably what, like uh, 20 gigabits per second of throughput, the 9600 GT, which is only about 40 bucks more, 30 bucks more, is actually doing closer to 60, probably 58, something like that, 60. So you, as you see, you get a huge increase for only a few dollars more, and that's because of that generational divide when they came out with the new next generation uh, GPUs. So definitely look into the 9600 GT. I don't recommend the 8600 GT unless you're trying to build a budget system. The 9600 GT will work out much better for you. It's got more options, more features. You can overclock it. It's a great, great card. On to the next email. The next one is from JC. Dear Albert, saw your video review on the Averitech All-in-One. Was wondering, how can I get in there to expand it? Add memory, change LAN to gigabit, change CPU, change optical drive, bigger hard drive. Thanks. Ted. Hmm, JC, but he signed Ted. Interesting. Ted. <clears throat> don't mess with the Averitech. Just don't do it. It's beautiful. The whole point of the Veritech is that it's that slim, sleek, nice case. It looks almost like a uh, an iMac. It's great. Don't mess with it. Uh, you know, if you want, you can definitely upgrade the RAM. You can definitely upgrade the hard drive. The CPU, on the other hand, since the motherboard is proprietary and it's all fit, you know, set up to fit in that form factor, it's going to be kind of hard to uh, get out of there. I don't even know what it looks like on the in there. So I'm sure you can do the RAM. I'm sure you can do the hard drive. I would kind of stay away from messing with the processor or anything else. Gigabit LAN. It's probably integrated onto the motherboard. You're not going to be able to change it. Now, if you're really interested in, in getting something that you can upgrade and work on, it sounds like that's what you want to do. Just look into building your own. You know, you might not be able to do the whole slim form form factor thing, but you get to uh, you know you get to mess with it. Now, if you're absolutely you know stuck on upgrading the Averitech because you like that form factor. I can't really tell you how much you can do. Your, your best bet's gonna be to crack it open and see what you can do. Keep in mind, it's gonna avoid your warranty. And uh, I don't know how Veritech will feel about you uh, messing with their computer, but you can definitely give it a try. Crack it open, see how hard it is to get to the CPU, how the CPU cooler looks. Uh, you can easily upgrade the RAM and easily upgrade the hard drive at the minimum. Next email from Peter Shank. Can I say his last name? Ah, whatever. Peter Shank. I hope he doesn't shank me for saying his last name. Prison Shank stabbed me in the gut. Hi, Albert. Sorry about the last message. My computer went wacky and didn't let me get but three words anyways. 
What this email is really pertaining to is a monster gaming tower. Let's assume I'm rich, which I'm not unfortunately. I put together a small checklist of things I would like to make an awesome rig. 790i Ultra Motherboard, a QX9770, 4 gigs of DDR3, water cooling, thermal take armor and chassis, 1 terabyte hard drive, plenty of fans, 1200 watt power supply, and finally, are 3 GeForce 280s better or 2 GeForce 9800 GX2s better? Or is there going to be some new ones out that will blow them out of the water? Sound like a good rig? Thank you, Shank. All right, Shank. 790i motherboard. If you were building the ultimate gaming system, um, it's kind of tough. You have to make up your mind most importantly on whether you want to go SLI or Crossfire X. If you go with Crossfire, you run the X48 motherboard, the X48 chipset, whichever brand motherboard you want to use, and you're going to use ATI graphics. You're going to either do the 4870 or the 4870 X2 when it comes out next month. Now, that's going to be your ultimate build as far as the video cards and the motherboard go. If you go SLI, the 280 GTX, two of them, will almost outperform the 9800 GX2 in most situations. If you were to do benchmarks on like six different games and then six different uh, regular real-time benchmarks, they would probably first second place equal amounts on each side uh, because you know the certain certain programs and certain benchmarks and certain games are optimized uh, to certain strong points of the card. So uh, you know that's a kind of a loaded question, but personally, I would go with the 280 GTX because it's it just came out. It's it's the newest card. Uh, plus, you know you're going to be able to easily use CUDA on it. It's going to do a bunch of great stuff. So I would stick with the 280. Plus, you have a single uh, GPU on there instead of two, so you can always add a third. Whereas you can't add a third 9800 GX2. What else? Uh, water cooling. Yes, water cooling is great. It lets you overclock, but only if you're going to overclock. If you're just going to put it together, it's not worth it. The whole point is that as you're increasing your your frequencies, you're increasing your voltage, your temperatures go up on everything. Thing. So you're definitely going to want to uh, get water cooling if you are going to overclock and increase those voltages on uh, your on everything, you know. So it's definitely a good idea. Uh, thermal tick armor and chassis, that's fine. One terabyte drive, that's fine. For the ultimate system, look into solid state drives. If money is no object, solid state drives are out there. Check out the ones from Microtech. OCC's got a few. Uh, Samsung, uh, somebody else, Crucial. Uh, there's quite a few out there and they're all really, really fast. Also look at Velociraptors, the uh, 300 gigabyte, 10,000 RPM hard drives that are replacements for the original Raptors. The difference being that being instead of being SATA 1.5 or SATA 150, they're SATA 300 and they're a two and a half inch drive. So that little thing is spinning and they're really, really fast. Instead of on a big plate, if you're on the outside, it takes this long to get all the way around. Now you're on a little tiny one. It's going this big, really fast at 10,000 RPM. So those things perform insane in RAID 0. They're almost as fast as some of those solid state drives that cost seven or 10 times as much. It's ridiculous. So try it. Check those out. Uh, 1200 watt power supply, you're going to need that minimum to run two or three 280 GTXs or the 9900 GX2s. So besides that, that all does sound like a great rig. Now, if you do build that system, Call me, because I'm flying to wherever you are. I want to play on it. We're going to build a system for you guys like that uh, very soon coming up. But, man, that sounds great. If you can spend the money, go for it. All right, guys. So you have emails from me. You have questions. Send them my way. I will try to answer them as quickly as possible. For now, I'm out. See you guys later.